Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and this is the final in a four video series about uh, economic dangers, economic collapse, uh, with my friend and writer, Andre Pogar, who has been sitting with us for these videos to help get us up to speed on some financial danger issues and talk about uh, with us some of the ideas from, from his book, which is a really wonderful book called The Age of Anomaly, and we're going to talk about at the end of this video about how you can get your own copy if you want to you know, learn more about what he's been uh, you know, writing there, uh, you know, we've, we've touched on kind of like the tip of the iceberg in this, but it's really well written, a lot of content in there that is just really, really helpful, I think, to a lot of people to just arm us all to feel more as though we can be prepared for a lot of these things. Um, in the first video, we talked about sort of how we got to where we are now. In the second video, we talked about kind of the big existential fear that uh, Andre feels at night that you know might keep him up now and then. In the third video, we uh, talked about, I forget what we did. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, we talked about how to, uh, you know, what to look for, how to get, you know, information so that you can have a sense of when these things might be happening, you know, for timing on your own end. And in this video, we wanted to talk about the idea of uh, just general financial resilience, uh, you know, for all times, because, uh, you know, it's it's kind of a fool's game to try to, you know, play like the timing game of knowing exactly when this or that or the other thing's going to happen. But there are a set of just general principles that you can use to sort of, uh, you know, protect your entire life to some degree. Uh, you know, not talking about, you know, complicated financial instruments. I hope, um, Andre, we're not going to talk about complicated financial instruments, but just general tips, things that we can all do that will make things better for us during normal times and especially during like a major economic collapse. So thank you very much, Andre, for being with us today. What would you suggest to people uh, as like, you know, the, the number one, number two, number three, you know, top things that you would suggest that people might want to do for both short term and long term financial stability? I'm very glad that in our previous video, you've referred to uh, people who continuously recommended gold because this is an excellent example for us. What I'm trying to say in our final video is the fact that humility is way underrated. So let's assume that Alex wanted to protect himself and that in 2011, he watched a bunch of videos about how the monetary system is in trouble and it is about how the economy is, long-term speaking, in trouble. And it is. But he made the mistake, as you pointed out in the previous video, of putting all of his eggs in the same basket and saying, oh my God, I'm so worried that I'm going to sell everything I have aside from the home I live in and invest in, let's say silver when it was at 50 bucks in 2011. Now, let's also assume that unfortunately, as frequently happens in life, that person ends up dealing with a medical emergency two years from now, you know, a medical emergency, an emergency of another nature, he needs money quickly. In that case, as ironic as it may seem, he quote unquote protected himself so well that he lost 60% of his money. And this is here the key people have to understand. And this is why I've pushed the idea so much that you have to be diversifying not just your media consumption habits, but also your strategy. Because people frequently ask me, should I invest in precious metals to protect myself? And I say, yes. Then the same person asks me, should I invest in real estate to protect myself? Yes. Andre, should I invest in Bitcoin to protect, to protect myself? Yes. And it, it might seem strange, but in my book, in the, of, in the Age of Anomaly, I took things as I frequently do in my writing and my videos in a logical way. I told people, look, there are two main types of assets in my opinion. One, status quo assets, st assets that everyone knows, like stocks, real estate, and so on. And the second dimension is trailblazer assets, new asset classes, things that are generational opportunities for us, like domain names, Bitcoin, so on, things that are extremely risky, but have the potential of generating uh, asymmetrical returns for us and also representing, in a lot of cases, amaz amazing hedges. Great. In each case, when it comes to both of these categories, there are three subcategories. One, fair weather assets or assets like stocks, for example, that do well when people are optimistic, when people are euphoric even. So yeah, obviously. Two, life jacket assets, which are assets people invest in to protect themselves. And these are the, the type of assets that tend to do well whenever the scenario people are, are, are hedging against 
materializes. Like, for example, we have, uh, to give you an example of status quo assets, we have gold, of course, or to give, you, to give you an example of trailblazer assets, we have Bitcoin that was essentially designed to be a hedge against especially banking related uncertainties. And finally, three, we have assets that don't necessarily have a clear correlation when it comes to market sentiment. And I tell people this. In my book, I take each asset one at a time and help readers figure out whether or not it's a good fit for them. So I look, just do whatever it is that clears your mind. Take a walk, take a one hour walk or, or, or just lie down, do whatever it is works for you and put together, don't ask me to do it because you're in a much better position to do it for yourself than I am. Put together a, your own list of assets that you consider desirable. You don't have to, and this is the key, you don't have to invest in them right away. You just have, for the sake of our example, to put together that list, grab a pen, grab a piece of paper and say, for someone in my situation, this, this, and that are desirable assets. Because people ask me frequently to make one size fits all recommendations. But the thing is, if you live in, I don't know, Egypt or a politically unstable country where you're only a regime change away from losing your real estate, for example, then maybe real estate is not a very good choice for you. On the other hand, if you live in a place with a decent track record of protecting property rights and maybe other sorts of opportunities in the real estate space, it can be a brilliant choice for you. So that's why I tell people, look, read my subchapter about real estate, figure out where you stand in that equation and whether or not for someone in your situation, real estate is a good choice. Do the same for precious metals, do the same for cryptocurrencies. And in the end, you're going to be in amazing shape, you know, because the assets I'm recommending in my book, kind of having this mix between status quo assets and trailblazer assets. And in each case, having expo exposure to some fair weather assets, having exposure to some uh, life jacket assets for hedging purposes and so on. These are, s it's extremely simple to do these things and just think about how they complement each other. You know, like on the one hand, uh, let's assume you live in a country like Syria and are forced to flee. It's amazing that you have this option of investing in, let's say, Bitcoin, and you can leave that country. You can you can leave the country. You know you can you can get past border control. You can get past you know people who have an intention of looting you, without anything physical on your possession, on your person. All you have to do is remember a few words, and you can take your crypto with you. However, what do you do if the internet gets fragmented? If you don't have access to internet for one reason or another, in that case. It sure would be great to have some physical gold or silver. And this is what I try to tell people. A good strategy is not hard to make. All you have to do is think about your life, see things in perspective. Of course, I'm talking to the financial dimension here since that is what I specialize in and put together your own list using the strategies I describe in my book, using the tips I refer to, or of course, feel free to add to them. I always tell people, question my research as well, question my work as well. It's I'm not above failure. Just whatever it is you do, give meaningful thought to this financial dimension of your existence. Because when it comes to the financials, when it comes to, to this part of your life, a few simple habits that you embrace now, a few simple things that you do are going to help tremendously. So please, guys, just put together the list I've mentioned and make it a goal for yourself to gradually have exposure to each and every asset. Right off the bat, you need to know, do you want real estate? Yes or no? If yes, why? If no, why? Do you want precious metals? Again, you. If yes, why? If no, why? And once you have that list, once it's deeply rooted in your subconscious that you want to invest in these assets for these reasons, then you're going to be on a continuous, whether you realize it or not, on a continuous hunt for bargains. And you're going to be able to, among other things, be coherent and logical when everyone's panicking. Like, for example, if there's a huge, huge stock market crash, you might be the guy who says, wait a second, I've made it a goal to have exposure to these stocks because this, this and that. And therefore, you're going to say, OK, this might be a good opportunity for me. The same way when there are trading up, buying, trading or buying opportunities across other asset sectors, you're going to do the same simple stuff that I promise you is going to yield amazing dividends down the road if you just take a minute you know, to plug my channel to think about these things. I think that's excellent advice and uh, I, 
I feel that you don't even have to wait for there to be some sort of a financial calamity to get a benefit out of this type of living, this type of um, you know preparedness, financial preparedness in this case. For me personally, I love the idea of diversity. I don't think that I have a crystal ball either. And I feel like just having lots of eggs in lots of different baskets gives me a great sense of peace of mind. And that's a, that's, uh, that's a benefit that I would certainly enjoy during like some sort of a financial crisis, but even today, when things just seem fine, you know, even though we all have this, you know, the sense of dread of what's around the corner. But I mean, like today, you know, in many places, I know there's, you know, terrible places to live in the world where there's wars and, you know, economic collapse already happening. But, uh, you know, for the for those of us who are fortunate enough to not live in those areas, things seem fine now. So you might think, well, why should I do any of those things? Because it's like, that's a benefit I get down the road. But even, even today, I just feel like, you know, mentally, emotionally, knowing that you kind of have those extra legs of support, at least for me, it makes me feel just a great sense of peace, a great sense of calm, knowing that I have all those. It's kind of like having like a, a very broad extended family versus like just one friend that, you know, not to say there's anything wrong with only having one friend, but the idea of, uh, you know, just having lots of different people that you can, you know, you know, tap on if you ever need help or something like that. That's kind of the way that your assets are if you have lots of them. So I, I think that's wonderful advice. If people want to get access to your book, because there's a lot in the book that we haven't talked about in these four videos. Uh, if people want to get access to your book, uh, how would you recommend they uh, they go about doing that? They can find my book at pretty much all places where, where you can buy them online. Just search for The Age of Anomaly on Amazon, on Barnes & Noble, on iBooks, which is Apple's app. App and on Kobo. I'm also going to give you the link so you can put them in the uh, description. It's also worth noting that if you like the type of message I'm getting across, if you like my way of thinking, and if you want to have more exposure to my ideas, I would recommend buying the book until Sunday because I'm making a big push all over YouTube to kind of garner as much exposure as possible this week. So I'm lowering the price to just 99 cents and it's, it's not a typo. I'm just going to show you the book real quick it's huge like it's a 400 plus page book that took me a ridiculously long time to write but which i promise you is going to be not only a useful read but it's going to be pleasant it's not going to be your arrogant economics professor talking from above in his ivory tower it's going to be kind of like having a friend who just happens to be good at economics and who just happens to be good at money related stuff guide you through the financial part of preparedness. So again, if you want to buy it, I'd recommend doing it uh, until Sunday. Also, I'm going to set up an email address called friends at ageofanomaly.com. So maybe you, you see this video after the promotion is over and you're in a bad place financially, you cannot afford the book, or maybe you live in a country where it's impossible for you to use Amazon, Barnes and Noble, whatever. If that is the case, just shoot me an email and I promise, I, I genuinely am not in it for the money. You, you can see it by the price tags I, I have for my work. If you want to read my book, if you want to have access to my ideas but cannot get the book, just shoot me an email, friends at ageofanomaly.com, and I'm promise I'm gonna, I promise I'm going to hook you up with a free copy. Those of you who want to read my book, in one way or another, I'm going to make it possible for you to get it. So with that stated, thanks a lot for, for having me on. Thanks a lot for watching us, for taking my perspective into consideration. And most importantly, you have my utmost respect for what you're doing, for the manner in which you guys see life, and for the fact that you're willing to stop the extra 200 meters away from that wall. It's something I respect, it's something I, I, I have, you know, the just tremendous affection for. So thank you a ton for having me, guys. Well, it's been a pleasure to have you, and I really appreciate you sharing all of this with me because this is something that, I, you know, I I almost wore my, my like, smart person spectacles for this uh, interview, but I'm moving, and I, I left them back at the old place and everything. But, uh, you know, uh, this is something that I have a lot of trouble with myself, and I know a lot of other people do as well. It just seems so big, and you really do, when you say that you're reading your book is like just a smart friend that knows about this kind of stuff, that's kind of, you know, cluing you in on it, that's really the way that it read to me. I think it's an excellent book, and I, 
uh, you know, I appreciate you taking the time to chat with us. So thank you very much. Uh, if you guys would like to uh, have access to his book, uh, I'm going to put links down in the description below so you guys could, uh, you know, you know, get hooked up that way, uh, with, you know, to his website and everything, whatever he provides me, uh, you know, I'll be having down there. I hope that you've got, you guys have found this uh, interesting and useful. It, it is not the sexiest topic in the world. I know it's not aliens invading by air dropping bird flu infected clown zombies, but it is very plausible. And, and the kind of thing that really affects a lot of people in a lot of real ways. So I hope that you give it some thought if you haven't yet. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.